Okay, uh, I think we can start. I can see that we are very lean today, which is very good. I don't need to shout a lot. And it's going to be warm today compared to the other weeks. So uh, being lean is not going to hurt us. Okay, uh, today is the last lecture that we're going to have. Of course, tomorrow and on Friday in the sections we're going to meet as well because I have the continuation of the lecture. Plus, I am planning to show the exam, uh, your exams there in every section. So if you come uh, to, to, to the session, you will be able to see your exam. And if you have anything, uh, if you are asking for my regrading of certain questions, you can ask that there, not personally, but writing a piece of paper, of course. OK, so that will be the, the plan for the week. The plan for today is as follows. We're going to actually, uh, I will show certain things today uh, in the first lecture. And then in the beginning of the second lecture, we're going to have uh, 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 one of the episodes of a sitcom which is known as uh, Big Bang Theory. And we're going to show that. So we're going to enjoy a lot if you are not familiar with that. Or even if you are familiar, you might still like it. I have been watching the same thing over and over again. And then we're going to conclude today with the definition of industrial engineering. Remember, I promised you in the beginning of the semester that I will give the definition at the end. And that will be the point that I will give the definition. OK. Uh, now, I distributed two different things. One of them is the lecture notes today. And the other one is the summary of what we have done this semester. So in the summary, you see the week number. Only one of the weeks is not numbered. That's the week that we didn't have any lecture. And other than that, I, uh, gave, I'm giving all the weeks. And then in the second date column, you have the homeworks submission days and the term paper submission date. And then in the, in the remaining, I have the whatever we have covered that week, I have a summary of that. You know that I am uh, giving something like this every week. And I will prepare, again, a detailed version of that, which includes study recommendations and keywords. And we're going to move about that. Now, the reason that I'm, I distributed this is because I'm going to do certain things that will relate these to the, to the material that I want to cover. OK. Now, I'm not very good in drawing. So I used my computer skills to, to make some drawings. Unfortunately, the colors were lost for one reason or another. But I still have some colors. Now, this amorphous structure, I wanted. The, the main structure to be amorph, which means that the boundaries are not available and are not known. Now, what I'm going to describe with the next four slides is the almost everything that we have done in this course is going to be explained there. Okay? And this is the way that I am thinking when I constructed this course. And this is what I am expecting you to think about the course when you look at these graphs. Now, what we are doing is as follows. Remember, in week one, we started with the word process. Now, process, the word process actually determines uh, most of the things that we do. But of course, the word process is so general that it's very hard to understand. OK, it's very hard to understand how we are going to utilize that uh, in, in the work that we, are going, we, we have done in IE 102 and in the other courses. So what I am doing is, for example, think about this amorphous structure as the airport example or the manufacturing example, where you have a lot of different problems that can be written within this context. Now, when we start working on a certain problem as industrial engineers, what we do is we have some very vague idea of where we are heading to. So this arrow, actually, which starts very thin and then it grows, has some kind of a direction. So
So that's our initial expectation. I am going to analyze a certain problem. I want to solve that problem. And basically, my initial knowledge about that problem is very little. I'm not talking about industrial engineering techniques, but knowledge of the problem. Like the video that we have watched on uh, certain parts of airport operations is your initial knowledge. You may know certain other things. Of course, you are going to read about the original process. But the idea is that you first, what you do is you start with a seed that specifies you the problem. Either you might be working in that system as an industrial engineer. So somebody says that we have some kind of operational problems. You start with that. Or somebody gives you a report this thick. You read that report. And you get the initial idea of the problem. So, But this is basically where we are. Now, from this point on, we're going to move to what I called detailed knowledge issue, the knitted knowledge phase. Now, how are we going to move? Well, we're going to have observations. This is what we did in this course, actually. We did a lot of observations. And we are going to analyze numerically certain aspects of the problem or initial knowledge, whatever that structure is. Now, we haven't done that in this course, because that's not our purpose in this course. You're going to see it in some other courses, how to analyze for certain information. What are the analyses that you want to carry, depending on the functional area of the problem? And then what, what's happening is that as you are moving from this point on, you are structuring the problem a little bit. You specify some kind of a performance measure. You find out what the possible criteria can be. But you basically structure the problem by setting up certain of those issues that are going to be important at the end. But you have to do it in the beginning so that you know the type of information that you need to carry. And of course, you use your critical thinking skills, which is everywhere, actually. In all of these charts, in every page, you're going to see critical thinking. Okay? And then you, there are some other things that we do. And you're going to see those in other courses. But basically, what you do is from here to here, using some analytic and qualitative norms, actually, we map ourselves from this initial knowledge to detailed knowledge. There is also some quantitative aspects of the problem that we use, but it's mostly verbal, mostly comprehension. We read certain reports. And mostly analytic critical thinking that carries us from the initial knowledge to this detailed knowledge phase. That's the reason why I have been emphasizing it throughout the semester that your qualitative skills, analytic but qualitative skills, need to be uh, improved if you really want to do serious engineering job. Okay, for industrial engineering, of course. Now, there, what we have is we have the weeks in which we covered certain aspects of moving from this initial knowledge to some kind of a detailed knowledge for a certain problem. We have done some work in week one, week two, week six, and week nine. And if you look at this page now, what we have done in week one, for example, in week one, we defined the word process. In week two, we gave a number of examples for the word process, and we detailed the word process in certain aspects. In week six, we saw an example of a manufacturing system, which was a process example. And in week nine, we learned about critical thinking and some aspects that are going to be important for critical thinking. Verbal maps was another thing that we learned. How, how should we understand when somebody says something, so on and so forth. OK? So these are what we have covered. And you can see that this, these are important skills. Now, hopefully, you're going to have a number of courses, including some non-quantitative, non-IE, but more of general courses, like humanities courses, which is going to give you a lot of idea on how this transformation is going to take place. Now, when you look at the picture, what we have here is we want to achieve the problem definition. But still, we are far away. We are a little bit closer to that 
but we are at the phase of detailed knowledge. So this is what we did for some parts in some parts of the semester. Any questions on this? OK. Now, what I, the arrow, remember, at some point in time, I think I mentioned you the fact that there is a part of engineering, which is art. In other words, you have to foresee what is coming in front of you. So you can call this arrow as the art part of industrial engineering. Because number one, it is not a dark arrow. Okay, it doesn't show a direction. It's sort of a vague direction. But I think the, the way that you're going to feel more comfortable when you become an experienced engineer is that you will be able to figure out that arrow much more quickly than, than the others. That's the art part, which is going to require experience for improvement. OK, any questions on this figure? OK, now. Let's go to the second one. Now we are somewhere here. Don't ask me why I have the weeks here, OK? My capabilities of drawing figures are, is not very enhanced. You can see that. It should have been there as well. Now here, on the other hand, what we do is we are again trying to move ourselves from the initial knowledge to the detailed knowledge phase. But at this point in time, we have more knowledge about the direction. In this case, now we can structure the problem even more. So we can start discussing about some improvement activities. We can talk about structuring the process by even considering performance criteria, performance measurement. Okay? And this is actually the phase that we are going to deal with. So in this case, for example, we know how to deal with process charts so that we can detail our knowledge. But the question here is, the important part is, we are now, we can see ahead what's going on, and we have an understanding of what we are going to do. Now, the weeks that actually deals with this is week number two, three, seven, and nine. Let's, for example, look at week three. Week, week two is uh, a lot of examples on processes. Week three is improvement ideas. Okay, remember we have done a number of exercises. So from here, while you are moving in some direction, you are little by little experiencing, understanding the system, and maybe coming up with some improvement ideas that are not necessarily very mature, but those are the things that you're going to work on later on. Now, another thing is week number seven, performance measure and how we are going to measure. And week number nine, critical thinking is there as well. Now, I, in the, from the previous page, number one, we had some questions that I asked you in the quizzes. Now, Oh, looking at this picture, I can now see that I ask you two questions in the exams. Uh, question number one in exam one, if you recall, the one about solid waste, is basically this one. You, I want the, you to structure a certain detailed, sort of it was more detailed, it wasn't an initial knowledge. It's little, it was a little bit more than that because it was a page long. It summarized a lot of information. But you were asked to take it further and structure it. That was the first question in the first exam. And we have also had a question in this exam, question number four, the spare part question. OK? So the spare part question is similar to that. You have an understanding of the problem. Actually, we have a very detailed understanding of the problem because your, your results were very good. And what I asked you to do was to emphasize certain aspects of the problem, which is going to be extremely important in problem definition. Actually, somehow, you did the initial problem definition in the fourth question of the second exam. OK, so that's what you did over there. OK, so you can see how I am combining different things together. OK, so this is the second part. 
Any questions? We still have the same picture staying there. Unfortunately, I wanted to change the picture, but it's so difficult for me. OK, maybe I should have asked somebody's help here. OK, now let's go move to the third one. In the third one, now actually what I did is I am relating my detailed knowledge with the problem definition. OK, now this means that I am at the last stage of determining my problem. Now, uh, in that respect, I need to have a lot of information on performance measurement and maybe some initial information on problem formulation. And this is what we did actually partially in week seven and nine. In certain weeks, actually, we covered material that will be useful in all of this transformation. But there is one question that I asked in the exam, and that's the, this exam. If you remember the question one of this exam, it was a little bit different than the questions on multi-criteria. But what it wanted you to do is, it wanted you to take the initial detailed knowledge and formulate it and make it ready for solution. I didn't ask you to solve that problem. I didn't ask you to give weights so on and so forth. But what I wanted was, I wanted to make sure that you specified the problem. What is the meaning of specifying that multi-criteria problem? You are going to specify the criteria. For each criteria, there might be some sub-criteria. For each sub-criteria, you have at least one performance measure. And you know how you are going to measure that. You know which is most pre preferable, least preferable, and, and, and so on and so forth. So that is actually formulating the problem and defining the problem. Of course, we still don't have solution there, but that was what I aimed in that question. OK, any, any questions on this? Now, by the way, these pluses means that you're going to learn more techniques to do that in other courses. Because we're not equipped with everything which is possible for industrial engineering, of course. <laughs> So plus plus means that you're going to have other weeks coming in. Any questions on this? OK, so let's move to the next one. Now, this is the last one. I changed the figure here. So now what I am doing is now we are at a stage where we are able to define the problem. So in the exam question number one, you have specified the multi-criteria problem. Now, question is, how am I going to solve it? And how am I going to solve it requires that you transform this problem definition into a detailed problem statement, which means that in our de terminology, it means that mostly it should define a quantitative framework that you can now throw the numbers or use some optimization or use an algorithm to solve that problem. OK, so this is actually the, the last stage, still, we didn't have, we don't have any questions yet, which is going to take the problem definition and put it in the detailed problem statement. There might be one, actually, if you remember our last quiz. What you had was you had some kind of a description, problem definition, and bit by bit you were asked to write the objective function, you were asked to write a constraint, and so on. So you did some exercises here. But this stage also requires critical thinking. And all the previous issues about criteria, performance, performance measurement is going to come into picture, as well as knowledge of techniques, which I called, if you remember, toolbox. OK? So it, it means that you are going to learn some theory. The application of the theory is going to be when you are solving this problem. You might need some modifications to the theory, if, if, if that's the case. Or you might need to learn new tools. Or you might need to use some heuristics. Critical thinking is there as well, actually, in, in, in a number of different ways. It's more structured critical thinking, of course. But this is actually the last page. So if you can do all the stages in this, in this respect, then you will become an industrial engineer at the end. Of course, we learned a number of tools in week four. If you look at the page again, 
we learned something about networks. Week six, we learned about assignment problem. Week eight, we learned about decision trees or decision making under multiple criteria. Week 10, some notions of queuing theory. Week 12, a notion of probabilities. Week 13, linear programming. Of course, these are just samples. We didn't even learn those. I'm not count accounting for that as we learn, but those are the type of things that you're going to learn in a lot of different courses. You're going to learn a lot of different tools, which is going to take the detailed problem statement and obtain a solution. Now, still this part is the missing link. You need to be in the position of creating that detailed problem statement, and that's the role of IE 102 to initially tell you that this is something which is important. You have to keep that in, your, in the back of your mind all the time when you are seeing the techniques or when you are see seeing certain courses on how to transform information to this type of statements. You have to make sure that you do it at the same time. Now, it turns out that creating the detailed problem statement is going to is going to be something that comes with experience. So maybe you will feel very uneasy in the beginning, in, the, in your first 10 years. But after that, you will be able to do that much more quickly and with a lot of uh, confidence. So it's not an easy thing to do. But unless you do that, you can see that you are not going to solve meaningful problems. OK? This is good news and bad news at the same time, of course. But this is something that I have been talking about since the beginning of the semester. So about the application of techniques, application of the theory, modifications, new tools, and so on, I asked a number of questions because my feeling is that, uh, or our general feeling is that you are geared towards uh, solving some more structured mathematical problems which is the basis of this department, by the way. And so, for example, almost all the questions that I have, except question one in exam one, question two, question three, question four, and in exam two, question two, and question three, are all related with application of certain techniques to solve uh, the problems. I am not suggesting that those are the ultimate things that you are going to learn. No, we didn't learn that. But those are hopefully going to give you motivation in solving these type of problems, because those are much more straightforward with respect to the education that you already have in the previous three years. But at the same time, I think they are examples which are going to be important in understanding all the things that we are going to do to transform the problem from here and make it ready for those tools to solve. So they are going to give you that motivation and understanding. OK, any questions on this? OK, I spent uh, three hours drawing all of these. <laughs> I consumed it in 25 minutes. And you don't have any questions. So uh, what am I going to do next? OK, any questions? No, I, I, can, I can talk a lot, actually. No, no problem. OK. So it looks clear. Am I right? OK. We're going to see that. We're going to see in two years' time. The, the test is, if you don't forget these, OK, then I did OK. Now, experience tells me that half of you are going to forget these. Okay, and the other half of you are vaguely going to remember. So the ones who vaguely remember will have the uh, chance of coming back and if they still keep the notes to look at those notes or to the website. I think you, you may keep your own website using everything that I have here. I am keeping it that way. You might have your website for courses. Uh, you can call it the shadow website for the courses. You know the word shadow? Shadow, they have like shadow ministers, for example. Okay, and uh, you might have shadow course page web pages, so that you're going to keep everything in the way that you see now, and you're going to use it later on. Isn't that a good idea? 
Anybody thought about that? Okay, I didn't think about before this second. So, okay. Okay. I'm now moving to the next slide. Now, the next slide is much more technical in the sense that it talks about IE activity for certain problem given a certain cycle, a cyclic structure. So this is actually uh, how I am going to uh, consider the IE activity. So first of all, let me start from this point. We have complex problem environments. So the problem environment should be complex. What do we mean by complex? We are asking for problems that is not going to be solved by anybody else but us who has the knowledge of tools and approach to solving these type of problems. This is what we learn in, at the university. So it is not something that you're going to learn in going to a, a short course which is going to take five hours. Okay? So this is, this is what we are asking for. So any complex environment in that respect can be a medium for industrial engineers to work, regardless of the sector. OK. Then what we have is we, have, we are going to analyze that. There are a number of processes going on in that complex environment. You hear a lot of people talking to you, which, mean, which means that you have a number of different verbal maps that you have to recollect, analyze, understand, critically judge, and basically take the information out of that. We have some statements which might be written or in terms of reports. Discussions, you have the teamwork. You are not alone probably in doing this. You need to analyze the data that we didn't do in this course, of course. This is a very important part of it because you usually have to Prove your ideas with the data that's available. In other words, you, you, you should be able to say that this data shows that, and whatever you, your observation is, you have to make sure that you support your observation with, with some kind of data. And then you have observations that might be casual observations or systematic observations. Okay? Now, most of the, your fellow students in the fourth year, when they are doing the project, Instead of picking up the data from the computer Excel files, what they do is they go and observe systematically certain processes and take measurements for days, sometimes for weeks. And that data is going to be the basis of what they are going to propose for the solution of the problem. Because usually, none of the firms have the data which is required to solve these type of problems. They don't even have daily routine data, actually. You're going to see that when time comes. OK, so once we have that, note that what I'm telling here, by the way, is very parallel to the previous figures, but this is more compact. And then from here, I can now specify my problem. What's the purpose of doing all this exercise? What are the decisions? What are the criteria performance measures? What, are, what is the structure that I am going to handle? Is it going to be a big problem, small problem? What the, are the limitations? What is the time horizon? There is something that we didn't mention in this course, of course, but you're going to see it when we discuss in different courses some functional problem areas like production planning, like maintenance, like quality control. The, the problem horizon. The time that you look to the future is extremely important. Okay? Whether you're going to solve it for today only and solve, resolve it tomorrow morning, or you're going to solve certain problems in a more structured way for some limited time horizons. Okay? So this, this is important. And of course, you are going to make the assumptions. If you remember my previous slides, assumptions are going to Basically, remember the problem definition circle? Okay? 
with the assumptions, actually, you are going to have the problem definition circle either there or somehow a little bit lower than there or in another area. Assumptions means that I am not going to take these type of things into consideration because you have to do that to simplify the problem. Now, finally, once you have that problem, then we call it formulation stage. We are going to analytically describe the problem. And this analytical description in a lot of cases will be a mathematical description, or it might be a graphical description, or a network type description. And once we, are, we have defined that, then it is ready for solution. And that solution is what I call the toolbox, the things that you're going to learn. And basically, you obtain a solution. But when you are solving these type of problems, a single solution is never going to be sufficient. You have to get feedback, create alternatives, interrogate the applicability, generalize. Your friends in the fourth year are now fighting for this because basically they have completed a solution. They were able to obtain a solution in the beginning of, let's say, March for their projects. But now, when they bring that solution to the problem owner, the problem owner is saying that, well, this is, not, this is no longer true. I need more understanding of this. You only solved one single problem. You have to solve it for more general input values. And so on. So it turns out that that is another stage that we very rarely have time to do those type of things at the university level. You usually do that kind of work in practice, but unless you do it, actually, the work is never going to be complete. OK. So this is actually what we do. Now, there is a loop here. Sometimes you, you see, uh, not only you see some uh, bad dreams, but you actually are confronted with situations as follows. You, you, comp you, you think that you complete the cycle, you show the results, and somebody comes and says that, which is probably the decision maker, and says that, no, this is not the problem that I want you to solve. So, because this assumption here, or this criteria that you used here, or this observation that you made here, which is the basis of a certain thing, is no longer valid. Because the real system is a dynamic system, and it's changing. And you, as you have finished this in three months, you didn't go back and check whether everything was in the same way that you saw three months ago. So this is actually something that you should realize, you should always have feedbacks all the time in the processes. And in real life, this is the way that decisions are made. So you always come back, check again, come back and forth actually here, here, and the finalized solution and application is going to be really far away on the other side. OK. So uh, now, if you look at the same picture, this also describes what we did in this course. What we did in this course is, for in this column, we have dealt with some of the issues, like verbal maps, processes, uh, statements, but we didn't deal with some other more technical issues that you are going to see in different courses. Similarly, we understood parts of what we have here, and we understood parts of what we have here. We understood and realized that there is a huge toolbox that we're going to learn. But we didn't learn any toolbox. I only told you that whatever you are learning in mathematics is the initial building block of those toolboxes, but you're going to have a lot of courses that you're going to take, which is going to be helpful in building up that toolbox or uh, in building up for future toolboxes that you are going to learn. OK, any questions on this? 
Does this mean anything to you? Okay. How many of you think that this is... Now I understand why I am taking... I, we, we are taking 102. Okay. Okay. Now, this is actually propaganda here. Okay? I am, I am sort of pushing for propaganda. Of course, you are not going to understand it immediately. Hopefully, my expectation is, in, in two or three years' time, if you relate whatever you are doing in every course with the material here and with the material in the other courses, then you will be hopefully appreciating the things that you have seen in this course. Appreciating doesn't mean that you like and you support, but basically you are going to appreciate the effort of bringing those together. And if that is the case, then it means that 102 has fulfilled its uh, uh, obligations, let's say. Otherwise, it's just another course. Okay, questions? No questions. So we are going in a very nice way. Let me see. Uh, I want to leave that for the... Uh, well, I, ca I think I can do that. Okay, Let, let's do this here. I was thinking of first showing you the mo uh, video and then talk about this, but at least we can go actually on this definition of IE. Now, this is one of the definitions of industrial engineering. Every field has its own definition. This is probably something that you have seen when you heard about industrial engineering in high school. If you listen to somebody, they bring in these type of definitions and say that this is what industrial engineering is. Maybe I did that. You, you never know. But of course, it's very difficult to understand this type of a definition without uh, understanding certain things about the field. But I, I believe that at least we need to have one purpose of this course, and that is Hopefully, you will be able to understand this definition at the end of this course. So that will be the only expectation that I have from you uh, about 102. Okay. Other than like watching videos and having fun and, and so on. Well, some of you didn't have fun, but that, that's something else. Okay. Now, what is industrial engineering? Industrial engineering is concerned with the design, improvement, Installation of integrated systems of people, material, information, equipment, and energy. So we're talking about integrated systems. That's one very general definition of complexity. Remember, I was talking about complex systems. Now, when you have humans in that system, it becomes very complex. Now, I think. Uh, this always will remind you of what happened yesterday, for example, in, in the mine. Now, I, I had to start with uh, my condolences to their families who died yesterday. And we are still learning about new deaths. But the issue here is that that's a very complex system. You have a lot of individuals there. You have material, information, equipment, and energy there. And unless you can do certain correct actions, it's very difficult to manage and to obtain certain things from those systems. You have risks that are involved, and this is the definition of a complex system. Okay, now we are concerned with the design of these type of systems, with the improvement of these type of systems, and with the installation of these type of systems. Design means that we have to understand the requirements, come up with a proposal. Improvement means that the system is operating. We are going to change certain parts of it, and it is going to improve according to some performance measure. But in the meantime, as this is a large system, we have to make sure that it doesn't only improve in decreasing the costs, but it also improves in other aspects like security, or like quality or reliability, OK? So this is probably what was missing when they privatized all these firms in a certain year. Nobody's paying a lot of uh, 
well, I shouldn't say nobody, but people usually are, do not have enough sufficient control mechanisms that will control these type of systems. Anyway, so this is what we do. And we are also interested in installing these type of systems. So it means that I have done a very good job on paper. This is what I am proposing. And then I go to Bahamas and, and, and start swimming. No, that's not the case. I will go to Bahamas sometime. But first, I need to install this system. Install means that you make sure that it operates in the way that you designed it. OK. So this is the first part. The second part of the definition tells what the source of information is to do this. It draws upon specialized knowledge and skills of mathematical, physical, and social sciences, together with the principles and methods of engineering analysis, and design to specify, predict, and evaluate the results to be obtained from such systems. So the, this part is still not very clear, but the things that you're going to learn actually is going to fill that part. OK. Any questions on the definition? Now, do you think that you will be able to answer your uh, relative's son or your neighbor's son when she or he asks you, what is industrial engineering? <laughs> okay. So will you be able to answer them? No. How many will be able to answer? You can say that, well, you, you will just enjoy yourself there. Yeah. OK, still it is early. But you can see that if I do the same thing for other fields, more or less it will be the same. But this is something that we don't see in our daily lives. It's not like an electrical bulb. And we would immediately think that, oh, this is electrical engineering. OK, it's not like that. So that's the reason, that's the, the main difference. We don't know. Ask the first year electrical engineering students. They will only tell you very limited information about what they do. They are not going to be able to tell more than what you are telling about industrial engineering. Hopefully, you might be even one step ahead. OK, any questions? OK, let's take a break. I'm tired. OK. OK, uh, just le let us start. Uh, I have one thing to say before. I know that you are even more scattered now. So we, this is the core of the class. I'm very happy to see the core of the class here. That's, that's how I will call you. We don't have any fat. All the fat is gone. And we are left by ourselves. Now, we're going to watch the video. But before watching the video, uh, I was talking to a friend of yours in, during the break. Where is he? Uh, that, where are they? There is this group that I was talking. OK, yeah, over there. OK, now, the, the, uh, the, the styles that you see here are not arbitrary. Whenever you have a round, but it's not a circle, this is the least definable set. OK, so this is the way that I used. Then I have some circles here, which are small. But the problem definition is not even a circle. The information that you have in your hand, the available information that you are accumulating, knowledge about the system that you are accumulating is, has some weight parts. But the problem definition, which is an ellipsoid, is, is less firm than the knowledge that you have. Because the problem definition is something that you do to generalize your knowledge. So it is not as firm. Now, if we go to the next slide. OK. Now, when it comes to problem definition, I still have the ellipsoid there. Although it is much more like a circle now, because I am much firm about what I'm going to do. But look at the detailed problem statement. It is square. You know that like they, everybody calls engineers as very square people. Square means that you can guess what the person is going to do, because everything is limited. Okay? So this rectangle actually 
is exemplifying that. In other words, when you come up with the problem statement, you narrow down the problem. You are missing a lot of details, but it is well defined. So the linear programming model that you have is well defined in its own way. How did we come up to there? We probably missed a lot of details, but that's what we're going to solve. So this is, on purpose, is made as rectangle. OK? So I think this is, this is probably not very important, but this is the detail that you should catch. Now, of course, as you are making these square structures, you are confining yourself and you are prone to make mistakes. That's the reason why revision need always come back. Okay, and this is unfortunately the way that we operate. Okay, now what I, I want you to show is, I want you to show a video. Now, let me go back to the to last three slides, no, two slides. Now, it turns out that the figures that I described for example, the application that you have seen here are going, are all related. Do I need to turn off the light? No. Oh, okay. I need to enlarge this. Something is wrong. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. And so all of these are related to how we approach a certain problem. And we have those nice, well, according to me, they are nice, nice figures showing what to do in a certain problem environment. Now, it turns out that, in general, engineering approach, what we call engineering approach, is actually a process, a decision process in itself. Remember, what was a process? What's the definition of a process? You have stages of doing certain things. You come back and redo certain, a certain uh, point in time. And the way that we approach problems is actually a process in itself. And if you remember the uh, Big Bang Theory example, uh, they always already have a process there. You can see that if you are going to set up a certain way of doing things, you need to collect information, stopwatch. After information is collected, you need to improve it they have genius ideas to improve certain parts of the process. But eventually, you all have to combine it with the demand. There should be a demand to do this. If they didn't receive that demand, then it wouldn't be possible. But you should have your distribution channels. Everything is actually a, is a part of the approach that uh, one should take when solving IE-related problems. Now, if I outline the approach, uh, what we are going to have is the following. We have to define the problem first, which is actually trying to get closer to the rectangle. It's the circle before the rectangle. In my words, actually, uh, this is in my words, you, you will see different ways of r people writing this approach. This is basically the words that I used in this course. You have to understand the problem owner the criteria, performance measures, objectives, and set the boundaries. So first, the first thing that you need to do is that. For example, in, the, in this episode, they didn't shoot for uh, manufacturing 3 billion a day. Okay, It was only, it came because they had a demand. Now, then you collect data and refine the definition that you made. You decide on an approach. You can use a ready structure. For example, the idea of assembly line is already known, so you can use that. But of course, you have to specifically design the assembly line. Or you can formulate a mathematical model, use one of the prescriptions that are available, or you generate, and this is, this is what we do. Then once we have it, we generate alternatives. In other words, we never come up with a single solution. We say that these are the possibilities, and we take it to the decision maker. So we basically generate alternatives. That's, that's the second stage. Then 
we test the validity of the approach that we took. How are we going to do that? Well, we make sure that it works with the real data. We make sure that it represents what we wanted it to represent. We make sure that the decision maker is also happy with the way that we are approaching the problem. Okay, these are all testing the validity. Then we obtain and verify an operational tool. Okay, if everything is okay up to this point, we have feedbacks, of course, continuously going back, correcting it and coming again. Uh, this can be a computer program. This can be a spreadsheet. This can be a set of rules to apply in a bank store, in a bank, or in a store, or in a factory. It can be a program. Remember the, the program that we had for Mini? What was the name? KISS. KISS is a product like this. It's a computer program. In other words, everything is embedded in that computer program. There are some models which are implicitly solved, or some heuristics. It might be very sophisticated mathematical models or application of some heuristics. Then, in real life, before implementing it in real life, we obtain solutions using the system. We do a lot of sensitivity analysis. We compare it with the current practice or other practices that are possible. Make sure that this is really improving whatever we want it to improve. And then we do the implementation. So implementation is the last stage. And at the implementation stage, you can imagine that you will go back, correct certain things, fix certain things, come back. Now, this is basically what you're going to do in your graduation project. So this is more or less, you're going to have an example, a real life example. You're going to do it for a company, actually, uh, for a group. And this will be your ultimate uh, experience before you graduate. Now. Our role here in the curriculum, you're going to have a lot of courses which is going to fill this gap, and hopefully you will be able to bring everything together. Now, the one important issue that you should always remember is the courses that you are going to take are not islands. You should always try to relate different courses together and you have to re refresh your memories with respect to the courses that you took before. And unless you do that, you will have very, a lot of difficulties in different courses. First of all, you will probably not like it if you don't do this. So this is a very important thing that you should do. This includes 102, but other courses as well. Because as you can see from this picture, this is, this is basically a large uh, mess that you are going to learn and apply. You, can, you don't expect to learn everything in one course. And unless you, one of the points is missing, then you're going to miss certain things. So it is important that you at least get the information uh, which tells you you can learn these type of things here. This is the manual that you are going to need to apply that. You have to know the, the, the the, the resource and the source, the location of that source, which course, which topic, and so on. At least that is what you are expected to know. You will never be expected to memorize anything. You will have your books, your computer resources, and your experience, which is sort of memorization, but it's not memorization which you are going to forget next day. Okay? There are certain things that I will always remember. They are very detailed. If I try to teach those to you, you will say, well, I don't want to memorize this. But I will always remember those type of things because I have done it several times. OK? I now vaguely remember them. I'm getting older. OK. Any questions? OK. Now, tomorrow and on Friday, we're going to talk about your curriculum. And I will answer your questions about the exam and any other thing that you may want to ask. And I will distribute your exams. OK, I'll see you tomorrow and on Friday. <laughs>